The first traditional dressing we're going to discuss in the wound contact layer category is paraffin gauze. This is an example of a paraffin gauze dressing. These have a limited place in wound management as they can trap exudate under the dressing due to the heavy paraffin load and that can cause maceration. The gauze component of this dressing can also become adhered to the wound bed. Additionally, these dressings require a secondary dressing. They can, however, be quite conformable to areas such as digits as the dressing can stick on itself quite nicely and they don't require changing every day. Another type of wound contact layer is an emulsion gauze dressing and there are several brands on the market. Unlike paraffin gauze dressings, these dressings will effectively transfer exudate through the perforations into a secondary dressing. They have quite a silky feel to them. They have a low risk of adherence to the wound bed and don't require changing every day. They're also available in a wide range of sizes, including quite large sizes for dressing areas such as circumferential wounds on legs. Probably one of the main disadvantages is that these don't have a high tack to the surrounding skin or on the dressing itself, so they aren't quite as conformable to digits. A third type of wound contact layer is a silicon sheet wound dressing, such as this one. This will allow exudate to transfer through the perforations into a secondary dressing. Silicon sheets have a high tack, which allows the dressing to stay in place and makes them very soft and conformable. These are excellent dressings for managing category one and two skin tears as not only do they hold the flaps in place, but they support the wound and peri-wound tissue. The translucence of the dressing allows the practitioner to inspect the wound through the dressing. And these can stay in situ for up to 14 days with additional changes of the secondary dressing in between. In the traditional dressing section, there are a number of different types of pads for different levels of exudate. These sorts of dressings are low absorption pads for low amounts of exudate, and they're not indicated for moderate to high exudate. They might be referred to as non-adherent dressings or island dressings. Remember though that these can become adherent to an open wound, so generally direct contact with open wounds is avoided. They are often used though as a secondary dressing over contact layers. These are absorption pads for moderate amounts of exudate. They're generally not indicated for dry wounds. Whilst composition varies, they're usually comprised of cotton fibre and cellulose. Again, the contact layer on these can adhere if directly applied to an open wound. So they are generally used as a secondary dressing. This might be over a traditional dressing, such as a wound contact layer, over a basic contemporary dressing, such as an alginate or gelling fibre, or over a specialised dressing, such as a capillary action or antimicrobial dressing. Where high levels of absorption are needed, we have absorbent pads for high levels of exudate. These are not indicated for low levels of exudate or dry wounds. They are usually comprised of cellulose and superabsorbent poly polymers that can absorb and retain large quantities of fluid. Again, these are usually used as a secondary dressing over a traditional wound contact layer a basic contemporary dressing such as an alginate or gelling fibre, or a specialised dressing such as a capillary action dressing or antimicrobial dressing. It is important to understand these dressings prior to using them, as some of them can appear not to be very absorbent on first look. 
However, this dressing can absorb and retain up to 100 mils of exudate due to the composition of the dressing and the absorbency of the polymers within it.